We'll go with it. Okay, I'm ready. You guys ready? Let's go. All right, we already got the marker and everything. Okay, good. In the social media world, so to have him do it is a Absolutely. good thing. Yeah. That's a really, really good thing. Thank you for doing the show, Jen. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited uh, to do it. You're just, you know what? <laughs> you're just you, taking Wilbur. care of an old friend. I do it for Remember Will. when we used to have our own podcast? I do. I did do. you guys really have your yeah, own podcast? Yes. Yeah, we had our own podcast. We had a, we It did. was called Fluid. Mm-hmm. What was it was, it about? It was f.l.u.i.d. Dot which stood for f- look it up I did. <laughs> That's really? true. Yeah, that was that was the acronym that for f- look it up I did. Yeah. And literally we would get together. It was Jennifer and myself and Susan Olson from the Brady Bunch. Right. Oh yeah, that's why mm-hmm. I've my seen, sis. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and we would talk about all kinds of random things, whether it was politics mm-hmm. or whether it was films or what we would just talk about oddball things. We had one show that I think this was my favorite show. The one our our oh, Wilbur. The one that we used to do the the one that we did where it was our Wilbur. Yeah, she calls me Wilbur. Oh, you're yeah. So no, it, it I'll, might. I'll get back to it. It might be this, but it's 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 actually a business that I wanted to pitch Todd, oh, because God. because you know Todd has Fluid. Like, you have yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you have eleven different companies, right? <laughs> just just for Jen, still just for as, Jen as of right now. So we have we have Alzheimer Neuro, which is finding treatments, cures, and and vaccines for Alzheimer's. Hopeful, right? Yeah. That. Well, that's the goal is that's to find those yeah. and to raise right. capital for that, right? We have Gresham Power, mm-hmm. which works in the defense space, right? Right, Navy, naval defense, right? Naval Power defense. supplies. Then we have MTIX, which is the fabric treatment yep. company that puts mm-hmm. a microbial barrier and puts a waterproofing or a fire retardant on any fabric. Also makes it easier to dye and take color. Oh wow! But it reduces the chemical footprint to almost zero, wow. and it uses almost zero water. So it will save hundreds of millions of gallons of water and reduce the chemical or the pollutants. We're gonna lose Jennifer this on this one. No, no, I think this no, is fantastic. Lose, uh, no, Why isn't this? Because I know this? she cares about the environment. Yeah, but very it, much so. It's, well, uh, textiles are the number two polluter in the world. Wow. But this I did think awesome. I did think I don't want to take a. Let me not take. No, 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 no. You go ahead because I I was just the um, you jump in any time. I did uh, not know that that textiles are the number two polluter in the world behind oil and gas. Yeah. So so it obviously wow. reduces the water footprint because you don't. Most of you, if you ever look at textile plants, most of them are in central in valleys where there's water, right? Because they have to use so much water. If you look like at um, what it takes to make a pair of blue jeans, you're talking about seven thousand liters of water to make one pair of blue jeans, right? So it's a really intensive, wow. a very high high pollutant. In, in fact, there are cities in China that close down for production about half of the time per year, so about half of a month at a time to let the rivers. Soak up because they pollute so much. It's terrible pollution. But to, see, yeah, that's crazy. that's one of the great things that that is one mm. of the things that I love to hang my hat on in, in terms of being a part of your world mm. and, and you know Alton Company and everything that it represents. Sure. Because there are things that that like you know f- helping to find a cure for Alzheimer's, helping to reduce the water usage in the world is one half of it, mm-hmm. but reducing the pollutants is another part of it. Sure. That it, you know makes you feel good about coming to work and, and doing that, but he, he has 11 different companies. How am I going to transition to a very Brady Christmas? <laughs> well, we're going to get there. We're going to get okay. there because we started this conversation talking about the podcast that yes. Jennifer and I used to do together, mm-hmm. and and this there was one business, there was one business that I really wanted to do. And, oh, yes. And, and it, it's because I wanted to make Christmas Farcher. We've got this whole plan. Christmas farcher, farcher, yes. yes. Christmas for like, like you would have like Granny's favorite farcher, yes. you know. And so you know, because during the holidays when you come in and you farcher. and you smell that, you get that that You'd love that, to that get smell that farcher because you know your own farcher always smells great, yeah. but it doesn't always smell good to somebody else. That's right. But if you could create farcher <laughs> that smelled good to everyone, you'd have quite the product. <laughs> and we're serious. We're serious. Right. Because farcher is the old English word for turkey stuffing. Got it. So we had this so grand we, plan. Yeah, so we thought if we made turkey stuffing that you could purchase in the stores and it would be and it would be, you know, called Granny's favorite farcher or grandpa's farcher. 
and and you could the the marketing on it would just be fantastic oh, you because could, it would it be go, you could go anywhere with this. Oh, absolutely. So and we did. We should call my wife right now because she makes the best farcher ever. I make yes, really good yes. farcher. Well, yeah. I've I've not smelled your wife's farcher, but I'm sure at some point in the future we will. I have to say, well, I invited you for Thanksgiving, uh, which you yeah, you said, I'll be, which you I'll said be no. sniffing my father's farcher right. at that point. <laughs> but, so See, wow, we did it's that my there. favorite holiday because Thanksgiving leads into a couple weeks later, my birthday, then Christmas, right. then New Year's. It's like a rally. You know, yeah. like you start there, the gun goes off, and she makes the very best farcher you could ever smell in your life. So, yeah, you'd and be taste. just dragging see, farcher see behind much, you for throughout the whole holiday. And exactly. see how much farcher means to every human being <laughs> exactly. on this but, planet. Right. So. Think about how easy it is to actually market farcher. It's simple. It's freeze dried. It's ingredients in a bag. You tie a bow around it, and you've got you a little know parsley in there. A little. It's it's whatever. a gift. It's and the farcher does not have to just be during the holidays. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be a holiday farcher. I mean, you can have you know year round farcher, depending on. And that's you know. that could be another packaging. Well, absolutely, a, because year round farcher. Because you know you could have you know you could have <laughs> if you if crazy. you went in, no if you went into if you went into pet so foods, we then you would have this? the dogs farcher. Are we gonna name you could the, blame it on the dogs first. Are we going to name yes. this episode, Can You Smell My Farcher? Yes. yes. Can You Smell <laughs> My Farcher? Oh, so, my but God. Now, now listen, uh, this is See, like we're Shark's Tank. It, we're keeping this, it away. This is like Shark's Tank because I'm pitching this to you now. Yes or no? Are you in? Are you in? <laughs> Come on, you gotta love our farcher. I probably would love your farcher. Yeah. You, you, you invested under. Sorry, Nick. Under, you, you, <laughs> Sorry, Todd. You invest in undervalued assets. Yeah. I, I think that my undervalued asset is my farcher. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a beautiful like thing. That. See what I did there with the yeah, word. I get it. Did. Willie yeah. Ames and Jennifer Rowe. But why yeah. wouldn't? But why wouldn't? In the this house. is what we is, talk about. Is that not? So, this is what. Well, this is what I dream of. Sure. Yes. Is selling my farcher for. Right. What better thing to sell than your own farcher for profit? And we. Could, I'm telling you, this goes far beyond. Can you farcher. imagine? Can and you imagine? Well, you the, part of this whole think, idea of farcher. But think about the accessories to farcher that you could market along with that. Oh. There's derivatives of farcher. The aprons. Absolutely. A- cap. Caps. Do you love the smell of my farcher? Right. Yes. I get it. Yeah. We could, you know You're what? And I, I and I, now I happen, I'm not going to say who, and I don't want you to say who or you to say who, but I, I do have a musician in my family who could probably write a brand new Christmas farcher jingle. Probably could. Oh my gosh. We could go on, we could have our own t- commercials. Yeah. This could be fabulous. People could want to buy your farcher. Yeah. I I think they jar it up and then they could just open it and well, smell it's, your farcher. Well, it's packaged. It would be a, you know I'm I'm picturing like a like a, a an old style you know like an old timey um, uh, sort of burlap. I was thinking the same thing. Like burlap. a burlap bag. Burlap. And then yeah. the plastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, with mm. a nice big you know pink bow on it. Mm. I mean the poopery worked. The stuff that you spray. I'm in the aware bowl of so what poopery you... is. My daughter bought it for me. For yeah, Christmas. I mean poopery works. Poopery is yeah. This is just yeah. pre. This is what happens before poopery. <laughs> you, you could also. Is you've see, got you could, you could package it with poopery. It, you've got. That could be a well. Well, you could on the, uh, on the would, shelf next it to it. Be a gift set. <laughs> oh my god. First. <laughs> It would be a gift set. You would. I just sorry. You would, I'm sorry. You could Welcome get, to. You could get. Sorry. You could get salami. World. You could sell salamis or cured meats, farcher, and it all leads to poopery. <laughs> I, <laughs> wow. We've left him speechless. Oh my. You know what? I'm usually not speechless. <laughs> This is I. And I bet you talked about this on the the prior podcast. Well, we didn't get as far as poopery. We mm. only got to farcher. Wow. Yeah, we didn't. So, we, that didn't. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, but anyway, then we, then we, we had did. Our own we, yeah, and we did things like. Guilty pleasures is what Oh, yeah, thinking. we would speak of our, our, of guilty pleasures. We had that, one episode. That's all it was. was our, yeah, just talking mm. about the things. For an hour. That, <laughs> the, talking about the things that we. Why'd you that, stop? That, um, well, you went back to the ship. I went back to the ship. Yeah, and, Susan and, and I. And was doing that. And yeah. Susan was doing it. There was there were a few issues yeah. around. We needed a little. Around it. Sorry. That yeah. sort of, you know, you could just see that, that, that some of the people that we were working with to do produce the, the podcast weren't pushing it forward. How and long yeah. ago was this? 
four years ago? Three, four, yeah. Five years ago? Mm-hmm. Oh, because it seems like that would be, you guys were kind of ahead of your time a little bit. Well, it, it, Because now podcasts are huge. It know, had the, together. it had the potential to really do well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the three of us together, I thought, were quite funny. Yeah, we were a pretty good But you and I tended to keep things lighter. Susan, yeah, Susan, Susan gets really a little, yeah. gets into the, the geopolitical. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like she gets very, I mean, that's very, her passion. She loves talking about that. And yeah. Willie and I are like, no. Yeah, don't be afraid to go light with it. Yeah. Yeah. Li- yeah. You know, and then Smell Barry my farcher. Yeah, we, yeah we're, we want to talk about Barcher. Right. We want to talk politics, a lot, yeah, which kind of maybe bodily functions. I think together. is in general is the is the genre mm-hmm. that we were more into. I wouldn't know that Susan was serious. She's a serious person. Yeah, she's a, yeah, she, but she's fun. She's I mean, she's a, sweet a lot. Girl. Oh she's yeah, just, but she can get when it gets into the geopolitical um, sort of topics about lots of things, whether it's ISIS or what you know. Oh really? Then she, yeah, she's so she's for very the well read. Out there, we're talking about well Cindy read. Brady, by yeah. the way, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Cindy she's Brady. Very well yeah. read on it, and she yeah. she knows what she's talking about. She does. I mean, she's mm-hmm. she's a smart girl. So is is you know as we were doing the podcasts and and you were doing some of those things, and we thought, well, we have an open slot. I thought the, the person we should bring in would be Jennifer because we would have a good time. And it, mm-hmm. and I know that you're a fan of Jennifer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> damn. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you well. Just, just <laughs> damn. The, you told me to tone it down. No. That, well, I, I think know. that was more than like it was almost threatening a little bit. <gasps> Well, it was anybody here yesterday? <laughs> yes, I was. I, I'm. It was threatening. Well, there was. Yeah, I'm very protective. He's my BFF. Yeah, I got I'm that. very. Yeah. I'm very. But I'm equally protective of Todd. Of oh, course. Sorry, yeah. You've. I. You. You've seen me. I have full disclosure. I told my wife Jennifer is going to be on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, and, my, and wife my wife actually met Jennifer. Are, are very wow. very. Close my actually, friends. what my wife actually thinks she met Jennifer because she was on. Uh, uh, I think uh, one of the Brady epi- one of the Brady shows you did. She I was did. an extra. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, was she in the the, the crowd scene? I don't know. I Dad don't know. Brady she did. She did. A, um, she was when she was in college. She was an extra on a ton of stuff. Um, she was an extra on NYPD Blue. NYPD Blue, mm-hmm. uh, Friends, uh, ER, The West Wing, CSI. Sure. She did a commercial with uh, Cal Ripken Jr. She was on a YouTube uh, video. She was a Labatt's beer girl. She oh, was all kinds she, of stuff. She worked at Disney for a while, too. She right? did. She worked for Disney for yeah, a while, too. In, yeah. in uh, production there. Oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah. she thought she met you, but I don't. I can't She's speak very for sweet, her. Aww. Yeah, I can't speak for her, for sure. She said, I was on, I was, was an on, actor in these Brady a, shows. Yeah, I bet she was in the big crowd where Dad Brady is trapped in the building. I don't know. I don't know that I... I don't know that I would have saw it except to see Jennifer yeah. Runyon. Yeah. Very oh. sweet. Well, I need yeah. to meet her. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that'll definitely... You kind of look alike. Aw. Yeah. Does everyone... Who's met Christy here? Just me. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, you're both blonde. Okay. You don't <laughs> think... Th- they don't think they have similar facial features? Um, Let me just look at the monitor. Look right in the lens there. Oh, for come me. on. Come on. Yeah, they do. All right. Come on. Yeah, they do. Although she's six foot tall. Like yeah. five. Oh, well. She'll tell you she's 5'11 and three oh quarters. Oh, my gosh. But I think she's Oh, six, she should yeah. own that six foot. Yeah, I'm I think she's only 5'3. Should. Oh, really? I think she should own it, too. Are, Are you 5'3? Five five I'm 5'3. Five well, no wonder we always saw Ida. I'm only 5'5. Five five. So, right? I know we're all over the place, but so what's yeah. up with this Charles and Charles reunion? This is just a, a signing up in LA, or are you guys actually going to do a show, or what's the plans? No, I can. I think. I think. Would well, you? You go ahead and address well, it. Yeah. He and well, I talk it's all the time. it's a with all the yeah. reboots. Wait, why wouldn't you guys be doing a show? I don't know. Um, I, I, I yeah. D- who knows? There's. I don't think there's. I mean, it, just the fact that we're doing a show where we're signing autographs together. First mm-hmm. of all, th- uh, many of the people have passed away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then we're doing the show where we're signing autographs together, and it's kind of combining a few things. I know that there's going to be some people from Charles in Charge. There'll be some people mm-hmm. from the movie that Zap that Scott and I did together. Mm-hmm. There'll be some from uh, one of the one of the other shows that Scott was doing. And what they what they are doing is is there's every year there's a Hollywood autograph show where all mm-hmm. of these people come like twice a year I think yeah yeah they yeah. did one in the spring and one in the winter mm-hmm. and, you did one a couple of years ago right yeah I do I do an autograph show about every two years because you know you can't keep going back to the same ones every year mm-hmm. and people come from all over the world so this is the first one we've done a couple of other sort of Charles and Charge reunions but not everybody could make it right. And so this is the first one where Scott Baio has actually been able to make it. Ellen Travolta has been able to make mm-hmm. it. Sandra Kearns has been able to make it. Some of the kids from the first season, the original season on CBS, um, are able to make it. 
And so, if I recall, if I recall, I don't want to forget this question. Wasn't there a time where Charles in Charge was on, then off, then people demanded it come back on or something? Yes. I, I vaguely remember that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, go, go well, on. I was in the original series when when they did the pilot for Charles in Charge. Mm -hmm. I was in the pilot. But that's all I was supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. I wasn't supposed to do the whole show. And after the pilot, I got offered to be a regular on the show with, with Will and Scott, which was great. Mm -hmm. And we were on for one year on mm -hmm. CBS. Yeah. And then they said bye-bye to us. Yeah, so yeah. What, had, what had happened with but that? But you were on for three years, right? No, I was just on the very first year. But I came on and did yeah. a, two episodes. Yeah. That's true. Hey, she's coming in to do a couple of uh, guests. So what happened with CBS how, at that time well was I know my stuff. Um, Charles in Charge had been sitting on the shelf at CBS for two, three years. And they finally were able to sign Scott. And for just prior to that, Scott and I had done the movie Zap together, and we did another series together called We're Moving. And, you know, there had been a, a bunch of things going on, but I was not available. Scott became available. He took the lead role. Uh, it was offered to him. And then once we did the pilot and we got picked up for the first season, we gave CBS their only foothold on Thursday nights that they had had in five or six years. Because in those days, CBS had a, sort of a, 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 a wheel of entertainment, and that was being marketed to people that were watching Murder, She Wrote. Yeah, I was, was going to say right. Murder, She Wrote. Mm -hmm. So it was all sort of the retirees. So they really Like my mom could not turn off that channel because oh, it was all Murder, She Wrote. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and so they owned Thursday nights. Right. And so we gave them their first, their first toehold uh, then. And at the very same time, Who's the Boss came out, mm -hmm. which was a very similar show about a, a, a male uh, au pair. And Cosby, too, right? And Cosby had yeah. come out. And then we shared the evening with Elliot Gould and ER. The yeah. original the ER, original which, ER. Yeah, which was a comedy. It was a sitcom. It was a sitcom before it was. Really? Yeah. 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 And I know it's strange. Right. At totally the, different cast. At the same time, the president of CBS left, and Gene Jankowski came in as the new president, and he thought he could boost the ratings by getting rid of ER, Charles and because. Charles in Charge was was uh, doing well, and then replacing us with the new Flip Wilson show. Do you remember that? I don't remember. Yeah, don't no remember. does anyone Do you else. Remember that? It lasted four episodes, and it was gone. And we love Flip Wilson. But yeah. I'm not saying he's not funny. But no, but it was it just didn't work. <laughs> but Flip Wilson was just you know he was great in '68, but you know. 88, it probably mm -hmm. wasn't going to work. Or 70, when was it? 82, 83. 83, 84. But where did it go? Because Charles in Charge was on for a long time so, after that. So what happened is there was, it was, everybody at that time was talking about the death of sitcoms. Like their sitcoms were just no longer going to work. And there was a guy at Universal whose name was Shelley Schwab. And Shelley had this idea that since the ratings were substantial, they were really good ratings, you could go and make deals with independent television stations who wanted original programming. And if you could cobble enough of those together, you could still make television shows and do without the network. And that's where they came up with syndication. <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah. So what, they, what Shelley did was it took him about two years to go from region to region, city to city, all across the United States, and get commitments, dollar commitments, from all of these independent television stations, put them together all in one package and say, okay, we've got contracts with everybody. We have this much money coming in. Now we can go ahead and, and make more episodes. It was really an original idea, right? Because syndication used to be you did all the, the – the, you produced all these that were already ran – and then someone syndicated them to run them in reruns, right? Yeah, those were just right. reruns. But right. they weren't first-run syndication. Right. And so, yeah, it was groundbreaking. Right. And then uh, Mama's Family started doing it. And a lot of different shows mm -hmm. that had good ratings, but they just couldn't either, they, they couldn't hold the hour. or They were a great lead-in, but they couldn't find something on the back end of that so hour. So what was it? I can't remember. Was it on 9, 13, or 11 in Los Angeles, Charles in Charge? I think it was Wasn't on it? 5. I think it was on 5, too. Yeah. KTLA. I think KTLA. Yeah. So essentially what they did then was once they made their deals, they came back and they said, um, we're going to give you 100 episodes. And that was how they wow. got the cost, you know, the, the amortized Because it ran for a long time. 
right? We I were mean, on six nights a week for seven, eight years. A long time. I remember it being time, like yeah. inundated. Like yeah. it was on for a long time. That was, and and that was. I think one of the reasons that that the show did so well was because <laughs> when you get picked up, like when we did the first season on on CBS, they did the pilot, then they picked up two. So you had two opportunities to make it a hit. Then they picked up two more. So now you've done four. Then they then they I said, okay, I'll give you another six. And then you keep hoping for the back three to make 13. And when you have that kind of, of environment, you're afraid to make mistakes. So yeah. everybody, the tension is very high. Very and, stressful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you have 100 episodes and people go, I'm here for the next four years. Let's go. Right. Then let's have some fun. Yeah, then you start <laughs> and having fun and, and you get loose, and I and I think that's why things got you know um, got even better. Mm. Yeah, I guess I was confused. I thought you were on for three years, but maybe that was just one really memorable year because was not right about the time you did Ghostbusters. Yes, right. Yes. So maybe that you just became more well known from Charles in Charge to Ghostbusters. Am I wrong about that timing here? Because well, I thought was, I saw you everywhere for a while. You know, it was an interesting kind of transition for me because I went from a soap opera to coming out to, in New York, coming back to California and kind of doing a couple movies or whatever, whatever. And then I get a movie called Ghostbusters. And I was really excited to do it because who didn't want to be in a Bill Murray movie, Dan Aykroyd movie. But then I did, after I did that, I did this pilot called Charles in Charge. And... The next thing, then we got picked up, Charles in Charge. I come back to the set. Ghostbusters had just come out. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'd seen it. I went to the premiere, and, you know, I still was kind of clueless to how oh, it was huge. big it yeah. was, you know. I mean, I knew it was popular, but I remember coming to the set the first, you know, day back, you know, that now we're going to shoot the series. And I walk on, and Scott got down on his knees, and he's, like, going... Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm like, what are you doing? And he goes, mm. "You were in Ghostbusters." Uh, yeah. And I'm like, "Oh my god! Is it this big of a deal?" It was a big deal, and it apparently yeah. was. Again, now I know, obviously. Yeah, I was but. like 13 or 14 years old. You know, when you're like 13, 14 years old, and you're deciding what you like in your life, and then there's this Jennifer Runyon girl in Ghostbusters. <laughs> oh, you, you, well, okay, you know where I'm going with it. I don't mean she, it rude, but everybody, a lot of men in the wasn't audience here. She was hot. Yes, and so yeah. it was. It was <laughs> obvious. Uh, in fact, my I would tell my wife all the time. I said, like, you, all, everyone has a particular type, right? And mine was blonde hair, blue eyed. You know, like, well, there's Jennifer running Ghostbusters. I thought you were on Charles and Charge longer. I must have just been watching reruns or something. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I will tell you what I remember about those. But days. I had saw because Jen and I were always like Jen and I were. We were buddies. Mm-hmm. We were always buddies always. on the show. And we went out for lunch. I could see why day. that would be the case. He's a nice guy. Right? People yeah. don't realize what a great guy you are. I, I oh, honestly, I know. honestly, the really thing, the, the thing that, uh, you know, I, Willie and I, you know, Willie's had all kinds of ups and downs and stuff like this, but I've always known him to be the, the most genuine, nicest guy mm-hmm. ever. Ever, ever, ever. Ever, ever, ever. Well, and I don't think people realize about what a humanitarian you are, what a guy who gives back you are, what you care about other people. You're a family man. You care about your kids. It's really, it's, you know, I don't well, think they realize so, that. So if anybody's, Sorry, if anybody's wondering there. why we're doing this this thing together is because the the thing that the three of us have in common was that Charles and Charge brought us together. Oh, that's true. That's right. So if it weren't for Charles and Charge, I wouldn't have met you. If it weren't for Charles and Charge, I wouldn't have met you. Mm. Basically, that's so right. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Well, tell so, us about the lunch. I didn't think about that. that. Although I did, I did, I did think I saw you in a slasher movie. You went before Charles and Charles. Oh, you did. Yeah, I did. Yes. Yeah. You to were all like, a good night. Yeah, to the all a good night. First Christmas yeah. slasher movie. Santa exactly. Slasher. Yes. Exactly. And it was horrible. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> but that's okay. I yeah. want to see it. You yeah. got to see it. Do you have a copy at your house? Yes. Is Come that over. true? Oh, I'm so I'm oh, we should have it. a watch party. We could do that. Yeah, we can do not. It. Actually, you know, <laughs> you know what we should do, actually? For I was, I was in. Oh, you you should, we in. Should have I a, will show you. I'm not We sure. should have a fan sign up where we could all stream it live to all the fans, like a little exclusive, like we're going to premiere it, and then you could narrate what happened. Oh, gosh. Come well, on. We could just turn off the sound and run the script. Exactly. Well, you know what's funny? I've been to, um, what do you call it, roastings. Oh, where yeah. I've been to, they, they've invited me to these comedy clubs mm. where they show the movie <laughs> and they talk through it, all the com- the comics. Oh, really? And they yell at the screen. Oh, sorry. They yell at the screen and it's pretty hilarious. Mm. And I've, 
I accepted going to one of these, and then they did a Q and A with me after, and I had no idea. That now that's a cult film in its own oh, right, yeah. which is crazy. So crazy. I I remember I remember thinking I was you know. I pretty much had my shit together and I was doing Charles in Charge and things were going well and I was with, you know, my friend Jen who, you know, was sort of like we were like, you know, like foxhole buddies you know, oh, on the set. You were, we were anchors for each other. Yeah, and and so we're walking through the, the front lot, the front gate at Universal Studios and I'm thinking, I, I got my together, you know, and mm. this car pulls up and honks and the window rolls down and it's Bill Murray mm. going, hey, Jen, how you doing? Uh -huh. And she's like, oh, hang on, it's a friend. <laughs> and she goes over, and she's leaning in the window chatting. with. And I'm sitting off to the side for like 10 minutes while... Well, Bill Murray holds up all of the all of the traffic, you know, and I'm just and I was thinking, I ain't so hot. Uh, I don't, <laughs> Stop. I'm I'm pretty much on the lower totem pole. Oh, Actually, you can think about that Charles in Charge thing you just said about us all meeting that way or whatever. I met you on the set of Charles in Charge because. Um, you, Malo introduced. Oh, you actually took us around, and introduced us to all of them. Mm -hmm. yep. And that was the weirdest thing for that for me in my whole life was, I had I, I had already seen you a bunch of times. I knew Nicole because Nicole went to elementary school. I mean, I've known Nicole for a long time. We're not friends or anything, but I knew Nicole uh, because of of Huntington Beach, mm -hmm. and um, we had we had a bunch of mutual friends. And Nicole was. Very standoffish there. I think her mom was on the set. It was a very strange uh, experience. I think she was. I think she was just like you know, really rising star kind of thing, and mm. didn't really want to acknowledge anyone she knew from the past. I don't really know, but, um, but the weirdest thing ever was meeting Scott Baio. You're like, hey, here's Scott. I'm like, because yeah, in the seventies, of course, I watched him. You know, on uh, Happy, Happy Days. Days. Yeah. It was like it was freaking me out. <laughs> the whole thing, and, and so. Um, there was a point I was going to make, and I've lost my point. Oh, that we all knew people on that show. That was was that was the part that was bizarre for me. Mm -hmm. Is that I, you know, I knew someone that's already on the show. Then I knew you, on the. Wait, but see, that's the problem, though. Is that how did I didn't? Then maybe it wasn't Jennifer. Now that I'm just realizing that maybe it wasn't Jennifer that I met on the set. I mean, well, was there I did a, a couple episodes. So you oh, could have. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I thought I did meet you on the set. Because I know that I there was a Nicole and there was another girl Josie? on the show. Josie? Josie Davis? Josie Davis? Maybe, maybe there was she another. She had braids? No, she, no, no. But, but no. You, know, you know what I'm you know Maybe what I'm there thinking? was a guest if it wasn't star that you, week. If it, no, if it wasn't you, I'm thinking there used to be a makeup artist that looks very similar, blonde. Do you remember who she was? Marina? She, it was Marina. The hairdresser? Yeah. The little blonde. Yes. Blonde. Adorable. I went to yeah. high school with her. Marina yeah, Hart. yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But you guys have a similar look and you're about uh, the same size. You went to high She's school tiny. together? With so, her? Yeah, we yeah. did. I it's not weird. Her name. It's not so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, anyway, that could be it. Mm -hmm. that, that was a memorable time, though. I really enjoyed that day. Well, let me tell you can you imagine? You know, I am this young girl before, this is way before I started acting. Um, shy, 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 shy girl. I'm watching TV, living in the Midwest. You know, I moved to California after my dad passed. Where were you from? What, what, what state? Well, I'm from Chicago, mm -hmm. but w my dad was a, a radio uh, DJ. Mm -hmm. So we would travel to different cities, and, you know, he would be the morning man. But when he passed, we went from Ohio to California. And I grew up watching this guy on eight is enough i grew up watching scott and and you know posters it's your typical teenage oh, sure. girl yeah yeah and then years later we have some of those I'm, posters right like she my, still has my I poster i do Shh, don't tell actually her. her husband has my poster he in does. his garage he does. does he yeah he does. i'm in a g-string uh, <laughs> with a wrench we don't tell anybody about uh -oh. <laughs> But yeah, can you imagine? I mean, I was mm. like every other young girl in mm. the country that, sure. you know, so it was just so surreal for me, you know, and these guys but taught you know, me so much. You, 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 <clears throat> we never would have known it because by that time you were already a veteran. I mean, you had already done, you know, your soaps and your movies and, you and, and you know, she was just one of the team. I mean, that's... Well, I, I, I was very shy and insecure What was first. the soap operas? I did Another World for three and a half years in New York. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was fun. Todd's a New York guy. Oh, yeah. oh where'd you... I got an apartment there. 
Well, I've, I worked on Wall Street for a long time, so I, I worked in there. World Trade Number 2, and I have an office at 100 Park Avenue. Oh, wow. Where were you living when you were there? Me? 7th and 31st. Mm. Where were you? Oh, I was Upper West Side. Upper West Side, yeah. Mm. I, was new, uh, I, w- I was Westport. I lived in Westport when I was doing the show out there. Oh, in Connecticut? Yeah. That's nice out there. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it, it, was, it, you know, it was as close as I could get to Newport. Mm, got it. You know, so it felt like home, mm-hmm. but much snobbier. Much snobbier. <laughs> I heard you were, so I've heard, I think on another show that you were retired and then you were semi-retired, but you're actually doing some acting again now. Are you doing stuff right now? Well, you know what? My toe is in the water. Mm. And I, I did, uh, I've done a couple little movies, mm. um, nothing to really talk about. You mm. should, you, yeah, you should see the new headshots she's got. <laughs> They're great. But thank you. Thank you. But I, I did. I, I just finished. Uh, well, I didn't finish it. It's not completed yet. But I did a Western in Tucson um, a few months back. But, you know, we'll see how that one goes. And Is that the Western you know about? Yeah, I do, I do know about this Western. It, it, it has nothing to do with anything oh. that It I've has done. nothing uh-huh. to do with Willie, but, but he I, knows. But I, I mean, know I'm, the story I'm on the, behind it. I'm on the phone with him like every other day going, you're not going to believe it. Okay, anyway, we don't want to discuss I, so, I saw Willie and uh, is just up as a sheriff in, in a, an upcoming show, which I think they're going to put Billy Bob in, right, or something like that. Yes. Yeah, so and I thought he was great. So he you look great. So you remember Crimson Creek the, yes. the, that we were doing? This is the, I never – here's the thing that's weird about growing up and spending your life in front of the camera is that you have one image of yourself and mm-hmm. it's very difficult to break that. And so when my friend, uh, Laura Chartrand came and said, I want you to play the sheriff in this Western, I was like, no, I, cause I could never see myself as the sheriff. And he asked me to do it. And, and I kept telling him, you know, you can get somebody much better. And he goes, no, you're the guy. And then when I did it, I actually could then, I was like, oh, wow, I could do this. You, you look know? great doing I really, it, too. I really yeah. could do yeah, this. Yeah, you did. And we'll, sh- we'll, you know, we can post some pictures or whatever yeah. and, and do yeah. some oh, of the stuff from yours cool. if you don't awesome. mind. No, you can post pictures. And because what we did, we didn't do the whole movie. We just did a demonstration film, the kind of proof of concept sort of thing. Mm. And, um, the dis- you know, the distributors came in and, and said exactly what I had said in the beginning, which is, we, you know, you need somebody with a bigger name to carry this film because my name – Nobody's, nobody's going to buy a film because I'm in it these days. So Billy Bob Thornton, I think, is the person they were offering it to last. Oh, wow. wow. Um, and then, you know, then they're like, hey, sorry, you can't be the star, but, you know, we'd like to put you in the crowd scene somewhere on the street. And I was like, hey, if I get to work with Billy Bob Thornton, great. Tipping your hat to the Well, it's sort of by. like it's the same thing that happened when you went, okay, so Todd and I met because we – I actually is it okay to tell this story? Yeah, and I own it, by the way. Okay, I, you know, I got out of high school and between college, and I went to work for Danny McKenna selling cars. Yeah, he was selling I'm cars. A, you know, oh. I was a sales so, guy. So I needed. It was just as uh, Harley was being born, my daughter was being born, and I needed a, a you know family car. Right. So I went to buy a VW Vanagon. And we went to and we went to the same high school. It wasn't like that. We didn't. I didn't. I knew people that knew him. He didn't really know me. But I'm 12 years older than right. you. Right. Uh, but Edison High School, was it, at the time, was still a relatively new school. It yeah, was that's true. It was a relatively new school that was built, and, and Willie went there, and Willie's mom and dad lived around the corner, and so people knew Willie. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I and actually, I, was, I decided I wanted a VW Vanagon because Ellen Travolta and Jack Bannon, her husband, had one, and they said it was a great car. So I went to go buy this VW and the person that was selling me the car was Todd. Me. Oh my and gosh. So I and so I was I was like I think I was like a day over 18 or something. Yeah, you were just 18 a kid. or 19 oh years my old. Gosh. And so I said and he was like, "Oh wow, you know, you know, you know you do the show blah blah." blah. And I said, "Yeah, come up to the show and meet everybody and I'll show mm. you around." So that's how he got to Charles and Charles. Very good. Mm. And that's, right. that's why we have this connection. But Well, it was also too also Willie had done this thing where he had went to So I was a big lifestyles rich and famous guy. I grew up until I was 13, I had basically no father. My mom was a single mom, HUD housing. And so when cable TV came out and I saw Willie Ames go, and I want, and I'm, you guys have tested my memory because I'm 49 years old and I'm going to be 50. But I believe he went to New Zealand or Australia, one of the two. New Zealand. Yeah, and the guy is nuts. The guy is like, they said, come on, Willie, you want to go bungee jumping? And they strap on like a, a shoestring to his ankles and throw him off a bridge. <laughs> and it was by the ankles in those days. Yeah, yeah and back new. then there was no like... 
It was Bungie new. jumping was new. I'm like, this guy's completely insane. And so then I saw Willie on the lot, and I and and every and I I said, you you went bungee jumping with like you're insane. <laughs> oh yeah, Robin was new. Whatever. So, so that's I was enamored by the whole thing. At the yeah. Time. Fast yeah. forward to five years ago now, mm, I yeah. get this filtered message because you get the filtered messages in Facebook, and I don't check those very I know, often. But I, occasionally I do, and I go I through feel there bad. and I look, I've and I see so this. Many. Hey. Sorry about <laughs> hey, do you remember me? Um, I sold you a car like, you know, 35, 40 years ago. It wasn't like, that long ago, but okay. <laughs> well, it had to be at least 35. It was a long time ago, yeah. It had to be 30. Yeah, I mean, it was over 30 years. You were still on Charles in charge. So, so anyway, he, I, I was like, oh, yeah. And he goes, hey, g- give me a call. And I, it was one of those things where I, I'm, I mean, I, I just thought, all right, hey. And he goes, hey, you, you, you got it. And that's how I ended up coming to work for Todd. He said, you know, I left the car thing. I went to New York. I, be, you know, worked on Wall Street for 30 years. I, you know, brought all these companies public and did all these different things. And I've got this new company that I'm starting that is looking for a cure for Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. And I want you to be my spokesperson. And the reason I bring this up is because I told you the same thing I told my friend when he wanted me to do the Western. Mm. Dude, you can find somebody with a much bigger name that will actually get the job done. Sure. And you were you said no. Nope, no, it's going to be you. It's mm-hmm. going to be you. And I and I And by the way, I was I was hell bent on it being the case. Mm-hmm. I, and I'm not I gonna, tried to talk you out. And I'm going to go and I'm not going to go I'm not going to go into the reasonings or whatever, you know. But during the time that I you know, I had started on Wall Street and got and and, and got my fund relatively big, and then I kind of had a blow up in 2008, 2009 with the market. And then the company I founded in 2005 sold to Stryker for $120 million. A lot of my investors say, hey, come back and try it again. And so then when I started Alzheimer's, I wanted him to be the spokesman for lots of reasons. There's all kinds of metaphoric reasons why I wanted him to be uh, the spokesman. And in fact, um, he came back and he did some commercials for us kind of stopped and started a few times, but he's a shareholder of all mm-hmm. and now he's back here now running the media department and we're, you know, we're going to be bigger great. than ever. Right. We have a company called flashpoint digital media mm-hmm. and which is what the podcast is. Sure. You know, is that's the umbrella that it falls under, but there's some, some other projects that we should really, you and I should really, we should do together under that. You know, I don't know what you want me to go into about the Hollywood stuff, but Oh. I, I, I will. He has some really, really exciting <laughs> well, projects, and if you, I keep saying this all the time. People don't realize what a good writer he is. Oh, uh, right. He's a great. Oh no, writer. people don't right. know yet. Yeah, but they will. Yeah, soon. sure. Well, yeah. it's 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 been interesting. It, Jen has known about the the Hollywood project for years. Yeah, I think people think that Tom. She's. I mean, you have to understand. Jen is like one. Uh, my closest friend. I think people think of Tommy. They think they still think Williams, Tommy Bradford. Oh, this rebel guy. How is he going to run a company? And they don't realize all the stuff he does, mm-hmm. all the organizational stuff he did, right. what he did for the cruise industry, what he did for that. I mean, yes. they don't really get it, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. but once they get to know him, I, I, in fact, quite honestly, we have a, I think we have eleven or twelve senior executives at the company, and all of them were initially skeptical of me hiring Willie. And well, we don't. We didn't really hire Willie. We partnered Willie. To be frank, Willie owns part of the company, right. the media business, and and really is his own boss. But uh, but we we partnered together. But all of them eventually get to like, wow, this guy really is organized. He's yeah. a, in fact, I could argue doing. that he'd be better to manage my people than me manage my people. He knows what he's yeah, doing. Yeah, he does. Yeah. So that's something they don't know about him. Right. Right. It's uh, you know, thanks. I appreciate it. it it's. Dang it. <laughs> Take it. It's true. It's, it's, it's just true. one of those. I think. I think the best example is 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 probably working on the ships. I mean, you really have to have mm-hmm. together at that level, mm-hmm. and you know, you've got two thousand people depending on you to make sure that things go the way they should go. And and if you don't have mm-hmm. together, but I learned a lot in between Charles in charge and and working for the cruise lines and and that sort of thing. You know by hands on you know i was doing corporate communications for sprint and northwest airline and North, northwest airlines and marion pharmaceuticals which became merck which is why i fit in so well with the alzamend is sure i understood the pharmaceutical industry and what it takes to bring a, a product to market and and um and i'd become a financial advisor so i understood a little bit about you know the the capital side of alt capital and 
Um, I don't know much about real estate, but I'm a fast learner, and so I'm looking at your business models for the real estate, and you know, it, it, it's nice. And a lot of it is marketing. A lot of you know, just understanding the marketing process. I have no idea whether th this will make uh, uh, for a good question, but let's give it a shot. My daughter was a L'Oreal runway model for a short time, still a model, um, but really disliked the idea that to be a model nowadays, you have to have really an Instagram account. And when they hire you, they really hire you on how many followers you have. Mm -hmm. So I wondered if you thought it was easier to be an actress today or was easier when you were an actress? Oh, when I was an actress. It was easier to be an actress when you Gosh, were an actress? Definitely. I definitely believe that. My daughter is in this business now. Um, she's working. And stunning. Thank you. She's a cutie. She's Bailey, she's right? Bailey. Bailey. Bailey Corman, everybody, you know, check her out. She's got a couple of movies out there. Basically, our agents told her one day, they said, you know, they won't see you for this one project because you don't have enough followers on Instagram. And mm. and she goes, well, what am I supposed to do? Buy people? No, And she's like, no, no. I'm not going to do that. I yeah. mean, and I wouldn't, we wouldn't let her either. Yeah. So, you know, she's you know it's just tough it's tougher it's a lot there's a you know ev i don't know when we were don't you believe it was easier then yeah i t i mean i i really do and and uh, you know i mean now that that uh, i'm working very closely with todd i've spent a lot of time in the social media mm -hmm. space so i understand a lot more about what's because people our age really we don't get it mm -hmm. really. yeah yeah there's a lot we don't get we have to rely on the on the younger people around us to help educate us as to what we need to do Mm -hmm. And to a certain extent, the the processes are the same for social media. It's just the delivery of the content has changed. And I think it was much easier. Like if you look back at some of the, the old timers, I mean, this is my 50th year in television and, and film and, and, you know, the media. And if you look back, most of us have credits like your resume looks. You know, you did this show and this show and this show and this show. And there were only three networks. Mm -hmm. So we all moved around and it was really lo you know, located in Hollywood. So there was a smaller pool. Now, I mean, when, when you and I were auditioning in the beginning, there were probably 40 or 50 people that were being submitted for each role as a guest star or some sort of decent part mm -hmm. on any one of the network series. We're going back 40 years now. Mm -hmm. Today, there's over 6,000 submissions for one line. Oh. Because oh. they're all coming over the internet. They're one all, line. Mm, like One a, line. We, we have to read for one line. Well, one of the things I think that's insane is I have this conversation with my 21-year-old daughter and my son, who's 20 years old now at UCLA, and he would be telling me that someone he was dating he was having trouble with, and I was like, well, did you guys, have you been talking about it? And he was like, yeah, yeah, we, we chat about it here and there. And I'm like, and so one day I'm listening to him and I'm saying, when did you speak to her in person or on a phone? Mm -hmm. Oh, we, we just we just Snapchat each other. I said, what? Oh, no communication except by chatting. Yeah. I'm like, listen, oh, take yeah. some old advice. You're not going to have any human relationship without being able to see someone, talk to them, hold their hand, right. talk it out. I have no idea how you think you're in a relationship with anybody that you haven't actually spoken to. You have to. no com communication. That's yeah. just completely insane. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I thought about with Hollywood, too, is that, that um, these, there, these, there's these tons of people with these big followings, and I think in general, uh, here's how I look, follow me. And so I wondered if it was harder or easier to... Uh, in the space, which obviously you clearly pointed out that it's harder. I think it's a much tougher industry now than it was. And then there's a lot of crap too. I mean, you know, you have all the Facebook movies. People, I always call them the the movies that Facebook built. Which not everything is bad, but you you know you everybody wants to be a filmmaker right now. Which it's kind of cool that people have the opportunity well, it's, it's the, to make you know yeah the barriers to entry are much lower. Yeah, yeah. but but now we're flooded with. You know, a lot of Netflix series yeah. and, and stuff that or well, low, low budget. I mean, it's, here's I mean, here's I, I, there's just a, there's just a point where where when you take the experience yeah. that you learn from working with people who have mastered their craft over a period of 
decades. And you bypass that mechanism and you go straight to technology, which allows you to essentially shoot anytime, anywhere, and it's acceptable to the public you're gonna lose a certain amount of sophistication. And as you begin to drive that common denominator down in terms of what's acceptable, you're gonna end up with a lot of things that are popular, but will they will never, and they'll be commercially viable for a short period of time, but they won't be long lasting. Yeah. And I think you, know, you, you start flooding the market with that stuff. And it's, even with you, you were talking about my writing. I mean, I, I've, written produced and directed a lot of stuff but when i started writing not as the guy in control but just like joe q public walking down the street i want to write spec movie scripts it's it's a lot it's a lot of work there's a reason for it 